This is the second part of the tutorial where we will create a sink or a wash basin like this in Blender. In the first part, we have modeled the basin, added suitable materials to it, created a sinkhole, as well as a plug for the hole, so we get a complete sink like this. Now, in this part, we will add a tap for the sink and also add suitable flow objects to create a water simulation. Let us first hide this basin. We will bring it back later. Then go to the Add menu and under Curve, add one, Bezier Circle. Now, we have to edit this circle. So, go to the Edit mode. To select everything here, we will remove this half of the circle. So select these three control points together. Then hit X on your keyboard and select this segments option. We will now design a pipe from this curve. Press 7 to go to the top view mode. These control points need to be corrected first. Curve editing is the ultimate way to create any custom design object in Blender. If you are new to it, you can watch our foundation level tutorials on curve editing and the related topics. The links are given in the video description. We'll now extend the curve this way. So select this control point and press E to extrude. Then press Y and move your mouse to extend it like this. That's all. We are good for the curve so go back to the object mode. Go to the add menu once more and add another bezier circle. We will use this circle to control the thickness of the pipe, so we need to resize it. Please scale it down by 0.2. Now, select this curve, and go to the Curve tab. Scroll down to the Geometry section and expand it. Scroll down again to the Bevel section, and switch over to the Object tab. In the Object field, select the second Bezier circle. As a result, we get a pipe from our Bezier curve. To turn it upright, Go to the Object Properties and change its X rotation value to 90 degrees. So finally we get an upright hollow pipe which we can use as a tap, but we need to move it little up. Let us bring back our basin also. The tap is quite bigger compared to the basin. Let us move it up, somewhere like this, so that the tap opens into the basin. And to reduce its size, please change these scaling factors, maybe to 0.5. Fine. We need to move the tap toward this way. And also move it down so that its base part sinks into the basin top. Cool. Position it as appropriate or as it looks best. We can fine tune these values directly with X location as minus 0.4 and Z location as 1.6. So our sink setup is almost complete. We have to just add a suitable material for the tap. So go to the materials tab and create a new material. We'll use this default material, but let us just change this metallic value to 1. So, our sink is ready for the action. We will now add the flow domain and flow objects into this model, for the water flow from this tap. We will use two types of flow objects, one inflow, and another is the outflow. So go to the add menu, and add one UV sphere. This will be the inflow object of our model, we have to resize it, and place it at this end of the water pipe, or tap. So go to the Object Properties tab, and scale down the size by 0.075. We have to now move this sphere upward, and place it right here, at the tap opening. Let us go to the top view mode. We can fine tune its location more accurately, by moving it like this. And, we have to also ensure that it has the correct height. So, just pull it up slightly, so that it is covered by the tap. Cool. Now, to convert this sphere into a flow object, go to the Physics tab, and turn on the Fluid Properties. Then in the Type field, select the Flow option. Scroll down, and in the Flow type, please select Liquid. And in the Flow behavior, we have to select Inflow. Now, we want the water to fall vertically with some force, with a downward velocity. So, enable this initial velocity. And in this Z component, let us enter, minus 2. We are using a negative value because we want the water to flow in the downward direction, which is the negative Z direction in Blender. And we also need a domain object for the simulation. So go to the Add menu and just add one cube. Then in the Object Properties, increase the Y scale factor to 1.5. We need to move the cube slightly upward so that it covers this basin as well as the inflow object. So change its Z location value to 1. 
Next, in order to convert it into a domain object, go to the Physics tab. Turn on the Fluid Properties and in the Type field, select Domain. Then scroll down and change this domain type to Liquid. In the Resolution Divisions, let us go with 40 for the time being. Since the domain is opaque, we can turn on the Wireframe View Mode so that the internal dynamics get visible. Let us start the simulation with this. So the water is flowing down and it is filling the entire volume of the domain object. Now, the first thing is, we want the water to be contained within this basin, so we need to convert this into an effector. And also, we want the water to go out through this hole, which is the sinkhole. So we need to add one outflow object and place it here, so that it sucks the water out of the basin. Let us first stop the simulation. Then select this basin, and turn on its fluid properties. In the type field, we have to select effector. Then, please also turn on this is planar option. Now, we will add an outflow object and place that here. So go to the add menu and add one cylinder. We have to resize it and place it here. So go to the object properties and reduce its size factors to 0.15. And we have to also move it upward by the same 0.15 amount. Then, we have to move it towards the left direction to match with the sinkhole position. So, let us change its X location value to minus 0.18. In order to convert this little part into an outflow object, go to the Physics tab. Turn on the Fluid Properties and in the Type field, please select Flow. Scroll down and change the flow type to Liquid. And the flow behavior should be Outflow. Now the water will flow through the tap, it will be contained within this basin, and it will also disappear slowly through this outflow object. But the changes will take effect only after the existing cache file of the simulation are cleared. So select the domain object. In the Physics tab, we can either delete the cache files from here, or we can make some cosmetic changes in its resolution divisions, so that Blender is forced to refresh the cache files. Now, go back to the first frame and run the simulation again. So you can see that the water is now rightly contained within the basin. It is not leaking anymore. And it is also disappearing through the outflow object. And please note that the rate at which the liquid disappears depends only on the size of the outflow object, which is this one. Unlike the inflow object, you cannot control or customize the rate at which the outflow sucks the liquid. If we use a big size outflow object, the water will disappear very quickly from the basin so we won't be able to see much water at all. And if the size of the outflow is very small, the water disappears very slowly from here, so the basin will soon get filled with the water, and it will overflow from the basin. So use an appropriate size for the outflow object. Now, it is time to bake the simulation data, and make it ready for the final output. So select the domain object, and in its physics tab, let us first change the resolution divisions to 64. You can also use any higher value. Then scroll down and come to this cache section. In the cache type, we need to select modular. And also turn on the resumable option. Finally, start baking the data by clicking this bake data button. You can see the progress here. Once this is complete, please go down here and enable the mesh option and expand it. Under this, we have a bake mesh option. Click on it to start. Like before, the progress is reported here. Once this is done, we can see the objects and the domain all fully baked now. But we have to also set up a suitable material which represents the water. So turn on the rendered view mode and go to the render properties. Enable the screen space reflections and expand it. Turn on the refraction option as well. This will enable transparency that we need for this water. But we have to also set up its material. So while the domain object is selected, go to the Materials tab. Create a new material. Then, let us change its base color to some shade of light blue, like this. After that, since we want water here, which is a transparent material, scroll down here and increase this transmission value all the way up to 1. Also, we need to enable this screen space refraction option. We now get a water-like material that looks perfect, but you can further fine-tune it if needed. Then, go back to the first frame. We will now verify the simulation, but we have to hide this outflow object from the scene. 
so disable its visibility here. And also this sphere, which is the inflow object, can be hidden as well. Finally, we are now ready to start the simulation. Cool. We can see how nicely the water is flowing through the tap, and then accumulating in the basin, and also disappearing through the sinkhole. So, that was the tutorial on how to create a realistic sink quickly, in EV. Both the parts put together, it should not take more than 15 minutes to build. We will bring to you more such topics in Blender every week. I hope you like this tutorial. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.